Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to teach you how I make my homemade greens powder. Hi, my name's Corrine, and here at Spirea, I share videos that weave together plant wisdom, holistic health, self-sufficiency with just a dash of magic. If this sounds interesting to you, I'd love for you to stick around. So we definitely woke up to a chill in the house this morning, and that's usually my signal to get my butt moving um, and get some of those last minute sort of staples in the pantry prepped and ready. And one of them is a homemade greens powder. And one of the reasons I love doing this is one store-bought greens powder is really expensive. Uh, if you've ever purchased a greens powder before, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and what's really neat is that when you're doing homemade, you can forage for edible greens. You can use things like beet tops or carrot tops, stuff that you may normally have just put into the compost. I grow a variety of kale that I know the cabbage moths are going to go after and I grow it so I can dehydrate it and turn it into greens powder. So I'll show you, I'll turn the camera around at some point and show you some of the different greens that I'll be using this time of year. But I actually have a little bit of a beef with some of the store-bought greens powders and, and that's, it falls into the category of greenwashing in my opinion. Maybe not greenwashing but sort of misleading advertising that these companies can get away with. Um, a lot of times they will add medicinal herbs to greens powder. And they do this so they can charge you more money. Um, they can advertise that, oh, this has got ginseng in it or ashwagandha or whatever it is that they stick in there. But in most cases, it's not in the greens powder in sufficient enough quantities to actually provide any therapeutic benefit. However, it's just enough that your body gets used to the plant and kind of adapts to it and becomes resistant to its medicine. So then when you need it later on, it may not work as well. So that's kind of like a, a beef that I've got. You know, um, it's like when they say certain products contain probiotics and legally there's just enough probiotics in there so that they can tell you there's probiotics, but not enough to actually provide any therapeutic benefit. Greens powder can kind of be the same way. So one, I find it really hard to find a greens powder that hasn't put in some medicinal herbs. Um, and two, it's darn expensive. So if I can use the byproducts of my garden to make this, then I will. So I'm gonna turn this camera around. Hopefully, I'm, it's me, me working the gimbal today, trying to keep this thing steady. Um, my husband is back at work, so you're back to dealing with me as the camera person. But like I said, I'll turn the camera around and start showing you some of the greens that I like to use, especially this time of year, as we're, it's September 1st here, so we're definitely approaching fall. All right, so this is the first one I wanna introduce you to, which is a, I believe it's a native species here. Um, it is called, I believe the common name is green-headed coneflower. If I have that wrong, I'll make sure I put a little note here. Um, the indigenous population often call it Sochan, uh, S-O-C-H-A-N. Uh, it's really pretty. We've stuck it over in this back corner here where it gets mostly shade because uh, we planted it in the garden. Turns out it's darn invasive. But the leaves are really great. Um, you can stir fry them up, you can eat them like a wild edible. And so I'll pick off a few of these greens in order to dehydrate them. And so I'll just fill up my basket and so, yeah, like I said, dehydrate them and grind them into a greens powder. Get a nice close look here at the flowers. And then I'll take you over to some other herbs that I like to use, or not herbs, pardon me. Um, vegetables and green. All right, we're gonna wander on through the garden, but along the outside, I still have lots of dandelion leaves. Now, if you include them this time of year, there will be quite a high level of bitterness to them. Their nutritional content is still amazing, but be aware of that bitter level and maybe consider how much you want to include. Oftentimes, greens powder flavor is masked, especially if you're doing things like smoothies. Um, you know, you're likely not really gonna taste it. So this is what I was talking about with my kale. 
Actually, I filmed so many takes of this that I couldn't figure out <laughs> the gimbal. I'm not sure if I did mention. I grow two varieties of kale, this curly kale here, which um, as a note, if you deal with cabbage moths like we do, they don't seem to care about this one. But the Lacinto kale, they are devouring. And this one I grow specifically for greens powder. So I'll take a bunch of these leaves and dehydrate those as well. Over here are my sweet potatoes. Look at how glorious they are doing. We were worried. They were slow to grow and we thought, oh gosh, it's been such a cold, wet summer that we weren't gonna do so well, but they've produced so many leaves and sweet potato leaves are edible. I love to saute them up as a side. You can add them to stir fries. They've got about a similar nutri nutritional content, I believe, as things like beets. This variety is not doing as well, but still those leaves are spilling over beautifully, which makes me really, really happy. And I'm just gonna pick up my basket here. And of course, move on over to the beet greens. And I tend to like taking the ones that maybe aren't looking so, so hot, and I'll dehydrate those ones into greens powder and save the better looking leaves for when I want to actually vacuum seal some up so I can have them as a side. But beet tops are highly nutritious. And again, a byproduct of a lot of what you're already growing. So you might as well use them. So depending on when you're watching this and when you're gonna be making your greens powder, young spring nettles would also make an excellent addition. I wouldn't use them in really high quantities when they get older. Um, they tend to be a little irritating to the kidneys. That's actually when we wanna use them for medicine, for making tinctures and things. But if you have any young spring nettles, that would be a great addition. Um, things like purslane, uh, lamb's quarters, all of those like weeds in our garden that are edibles, they make excellent additions as well. So I want you to think, oh, and carrot tops. Um, when I pull my carrots and I cut all the tops off, I always dehydrate those to add into my greens powder as well. Um, you can do things like lettuce and stuff like that as well, but I find they just don't dehydrate that much. So what you're looking for are those really nutrient dense foods. So I'm going to get to harvesting and then I will film the rest inside and show you the very simple process of making your own homemade greens powder. Hi. What the, what, what the world are you making? While you were playing outside, I was harvesting greens to make greens powder. Oh, that fits the name. <laughs> so what is, have I ever eaten greens powder? You have. I often put it in your smoothies. I had no idea. Did you, can you taste it? No. Right? That's amazing. But you get all the nutrition from all these amazing greens that I'm going to show them. So one of the things I got quite a few dandelion leaves. Um, I actually managed to find some red clover leaves and red clover is one of those nutrient dense plants that I really like. And this one kind of volunteered in my carrot patch. So I picked a bunch of those too. I found some chicory as well, which is another one of those nutritive herbs. And then of course I've got my, um, the green headed coneflower or the soaking leaves kale and all the other stuff that I talked about. Now there's a little bit of work here in terms of um, what you need to prep for your dehydrator tray. Uh, I'm hoping this will come up uh, and you'll see it on the video. Some of the plants will have some pretty prominent thick veins. Kale is a really great example of this. This part of the kale doesn't dehydrate very well. Like feel how thick it is. Uh, Not the leaf, the vein. Feel that, like the big stem part. Oh, that is like how does it walk? Yeah, and so it's not gonna dehydrate or grind very well. So what you'll wanna do is with your scissors or you can just rip them off, you wanna kind of cut the leafy parts of that. Put the scissors I can, down. I can do that. Okay, so you know what you're doing? I, um, I right. have no idea what I'm doing. Oh gosh. And the same with your beet greens. Okay, so this kind of stem thick stalk part is not gonna dehydrate very well. So once I get my trays all loaded up, I'll turn the camera and angle it down so you can see what I'll do. Um, I have them in my dehydrator at 125 degrees and I find five to six hours is really all you need for them to get nice and dried out. You don't want to go too, too much higher with temperature because what can happen is you're actually starting to destroy some of those nutrients we're trying to capture in the grains powder. So keep that temperature low. You can do this in your oven. It's tricky. Nice work. Um, it's really tricky. So because it can go from being like raw greens to burnt to a crisp 
uh, pretty fast. So most people you'll set it to your lowest, lowest oven temperature that you have and even keep that door cracked open just a bit. But if you think you're going to be using a dehydrator to make things like jerky or fruit leather or greens powder, it's definitely a worthwhile investment. In the description below, I'll make sure I include a link to the dehydrator that I bought this year that I am in love with it. Uh, Corsi, I believe is what the brand name is. Corsi. It's that big metal one out in the garage. It's really great. So I'm gonna get to loading up these trays and then I'll turn the camera down to show you um, how I do that. And then we'll get to the grinding part. Look at this. Told you I had no idea. All right, so as you can see here, I have my dehydrator trays all filled up with my greens. Now, while it's not necessary to chop your greens into smaller pieces, I really like to maximize my surface area, especially with the really large sweet potato leaves or even the pieces of kale. Um, let me know what it's like where you are, but Ontario is one of the most expensive provinces in Canada for hydro or electricity costs. And I'm really cognizant of that when I'm dehydrating. So I really like to make sure my trays are filled up well, but not overlapping. As you can see, I don't have anything overlapping on here and that's gonna ensure even drying times. So like I said, I'm gonna put this in at 125 degrees. Um, I find it takes about five to six hours for them to be fully dehydrated. I used to do this just overnight. I used to put it in overnight and go to bed, but I have found that it actually takes less time than I thought it did. That being said, test it with your dehydrator. This new dehydrator that I have seals really nicely, dehydrates much faster, I think, than my old one. Also has a timer, which I love. So I'll make sure, again, I'll post that link below. I'm gonna go put these into the dehydrator for my you know, five or six hours, and I'll come back later and show you how I process them and grind them into powder. All right, so here is my dehydrator, folks. I keep mine out in the garage. Uh, we don't have air conditioning, um, so I don't want to heat up the house any more than I have to, so I like to keep it out here. As you can see, it's got digital controls to control the temperature and how much time it'll be in there for. There's your brand name. And what I really like about it, um, you can hear it, hear that? It's magnetically sealed. And so what I find is if the timer goes off while I'm sleeping, things don't start to rehydrate because they've absorbed moisture from the air. It really stays uh, completely dehydrated in there. And so then I just press start and that's it. I don't have to rotate trays with this one either. It evenly dehydrates. I'm really, really happy with it. I've been using it to dehydrate my elderberries um, for the last two and a half weeks or so, and it's performed very well. So like I said, in about six hours, uh, I'll see you and I'll show you the last part of the greens powder process. All right, so as you can see, my greens are nice and dehydrated. Um, and I will fully admit that I completely forgot about these and left them outside for a little while. So I ended up having to put the dehydrator on for about an hour afterwards because they had been sitting out there for a while but they're nice and dehydrated and at this point what i like to use personally is my little magic bullet um, i actually haven't kept any of the other attachments i just kept the blade for grinding and this little cup that it came with but you can use a food processor you can use a coffee grinder i would suggest that if you're going to use a coffee grinder that it be a separate one from the one that you grind your coffee with because there's no way you're gonna get that coffee aroma and smell and taste out of it. And so from here, I'm just going to start to fill my little cup here with the dehydrated greens. And I think the, the thing that most people are most surprised about when they make greens powder for the first time is how small the yield is. And I think it gives you an appreciation for why greens powder costs as much as it does in the store because you know you'll have your six trays filled with greens and if you're lucky you'll maybe get one to two tablespoons so i'm going to go ahead and fill this up and then i'll show you the grinding process and that's it that's how simple it is to make your own greens powder so as you can see all of my greens if i really cram them in there can fit into this little attachment with the magic bullet and one of the things I really like about the Magic Bullet, now don't go out and buy one if you don't already have one, but if you have one, this is an excellent tool to use for making your greens powder, is you can kind of shake it like you're making mixed drinks. And I'll show you what I mean. This is gonna get a bit loud, so just be prepared if you're listening to me on headphones. <laughs> Right. 
and beautiful. And hopefully you can see on the camera, this is what I'm talking about when it comes to yield. And so if you really want to make your own homemade greens powder, this is something that I usually start somewhere around April and finish usually before October or when we start to get our first hard frost. So I'm kind of working on this all summer long and harvesting greens. But I mean, this is pure nutritional magic right here, right? Like no added fillers, any kind of weird chemicals, no added um, ingredients that they're just putting in there, like I said, fillers, just to fill up space. And so this is pure greens right here. So there's something really kind of magical about making a green powder this way. All right, so I am adding my greens powder to my jar that I have been working on uh, for a few months now. Now don't get discouraged if you're just starting this now, I'm filming this, what, September 2nd? If you still have your carrots to harvest, your beets, and you keep your dehydrator going um, 24 hours a day, you can easily fill up a jar of this size in no time at all. And if you have a larger dehydrator than I do, say you're working with an Excalibur or one of the larger models, you'll get this done even faster. Now, if you have any questions about homemade green powder or anything like that, you can leave those in the comments below. And until next time, this is Corrine from Spirea Herbs, wishing you health and wellness.